Alright guys, today I'm going to be upgrading the processor and the RAM on a Dell Inspiron 1545 laptop. This is probably one of the easiest laptops I've ever seen to upgrade because Dell made it really easy to get to all the components that you might want to upgrade. There's a couple other things I'll just show you that I won't be upgrading today, but if you wanted to, it's real easy. The hard drive right over here on the side. There's two Phillips screws that you take out. This tray then pops out the side and you'll see the hard drive is attached to the tray with another couple of screws that you'd have to take out to just replace that hard drive. It's real simple. The other thing is the optical drive. There's one little screw right in the middle of the back here with a lock symbol on it. Take that screw out and this optical drive will just pop right out the side as well if you wanted to replace that. But today we're going to be doing the RAM and the processor and I'll show you those. I've got one new processor and one new RAM stick. I'll tell you why I only got one RAM stick when I get in here. Uh, but the first thing we want to do is unplug the power, obviously shut it down, remove the battery right here at the top, and then to get to everything else that we're going to be working on, there's four screws that you'll need to release. One, two, three, and four. And I've already loosened those to save us some time here. Pop off this panel. And then everything we want to get to is just right here. Uh, if you wanted to also upgrade or replace the wireless card, it's right down here. You just pull off these two leads, and then there's one little screw that holds that into the motherboard. You can pop that right out as well. So the reason I only got one RAM stick, it's a 2 gigabyte Kingston chip, is because for some reason when Dell built this laptop, or if somebody changed this before, I don't know. I got this used, but... There's one Kingston 2 gigabyte chip in here and a Samsung 1 gigabyte chip for a total of three. Uh, but I always like to have matched pairs, so I picked up another Kingston 2 gig chip to replace this Samsung 1 gig. To do that, there's two little spring clips on the side of the chip. You just pull those to the side, the stick pops up, and then you just pull it right out. Pop the new one right in here. Make sure it sits flush with where it's supposed to go and then pop it straight down and those spring clips if I got it seated all the way will hold it right in all right, somehow I'm missing the slot here into the slot and then those clips will spring back into place to hold the chip in place. Alright, now for the processor, we've got five screws that we need to take out. There's four right around the processor and one down here by what I believe is the GPU chip. And so we'll just loosen those up. A lot of processors these days have the GPU built in with it, but this one doesn't. It has a separate GPU chip that's actually soldered to the motherboard down here, so it's a bigger deal to replace that. Once you've got those five screws loosened, you can just pull this whole heat seek assembly out. Just like that. Alright, and the other thing I didn't mention that you'll probably need is something to clean off the old thermal paste off of the processor. I already went ahead and did that, so mine's nice and clean as you can see. Um, if it wasn't, you'd want to get... And, and actually, if you're replacing it, you don't really need to clean off the old one if you're not going to be putting the old one back in. But you would want to clean off the bottom side of this heat sink where it seats onto the processor, and I've already done that. They put a little kind of thermal sticker onto the GPU I'm going to take that off and just replace it with some regular thermal paste while I'm doing this anyway. To get the processor out, you just need a flathead screwdriver. There's one little screw right at the top of the processor socket. You just put the screwdriver in there and turn it until that processor releases and you'll kind of see it pop up a bit. And then you can just pull it right out. This has got a little sticker on it that Dell put on there. We take our new processor and just put it right back in the same way that the old one came out. I didn't show you, but the old one had a 
a little gold triangle right at the top right corner, bottom left to the way the camera is pointing to you guys. But So you just make sure that that triangle is oriented to the top right, the same as the other one was that just came out. And the pins will just fall right into place there. Make sure I got the side lined up. Yep. And then turn that screw back to lock it in place. And then you can see if I pull up on the corners, that processor's not going anywhere now. So the next thing we want to do is put some new thermal paste on this. I'm going to go ahead and put a bit on the GPU as well instead of that little sticker they had on there. Some people will say that you need to take this thermal paste and spread it all around like with a razor blade or a credit card or something. I don't do that. I just put a nice little dot right in the center. And that one got a little messy on the processor, but it's okay. And then when I put the heat sink on, I just let the pressure of that spread the thermal paste around. The studies I've read that have compared the difference between spreading it around and just putting a dot in the center, the temperatures are negligible in the difference that you get between the two methods, so I don't take all the time to spread it all around. Plus, this laptop's not used for gaming or anything like that. It's just my kids use it for surfing the net and watching some videos and stuff, so it's no big deal. So, once you got on that on there, we'll go ahead and replace this whole heat sink assembly. Line up all the screws where they go. Okay, and you want to try to not move this around much after you seat it, because you want to just have steady pressure going straight down on that new thermal paste. I like to tighten these four screws around the processor first and kind of go diagonal, so do the diagonal ones first, and I kind of like to tighten them about halfway, and then I'll come back and do the same pattern, tightening them all the way down, and that gets a little more even pressure going straight down on that paste that I just put on there. So get those nice and tight how they were when they came off. And so this action will actually spread that paste out if you were to pull that back off again, you'd see that it's spread out over the processor. And then I do this one down here over the GPU last. Tighten that one all the way down. Okay, so that is it. I'm going to go ahead and replace the panel that we took out. Pop that in and then we'll tighten those screws back down. There we go and replace the battery and boot it up. It should probably boot up the first time and it'll recognize the new processor and then it'll probably tell you to go ahead and restart. And so go ahead and do that. I'll put a link in the description to the specs of this processor as well as if you scroll down the page there'll be a list of other processors that fit into this socket. Just be careful if you're going to one with a higher wattage because you'll usually generate more heat that way and I'm not sure how many watts this motherboard is designed to put out. Most of these mobile processors though are pretty low as far as the wattage they need, so you should be pretty safe with any of them that are compatible with this socket. Um, this one that I'm upgrading to, if I didn't mention, is a Core 2 Duo P9700. Should give us a pretty good boost in performance, got a lot higher cache and a few other things. So, Any questions, post them up and I'll try to answer them. And other than that, thanks for watching.